Hi gang. Today we graduate to solving the quadratic equations. We always thought, or you always thought, were unfactorable. There's a way, and we're about to do it. Right there. Notice that the linear term is missing. In fact, notice there is no linear term here. Remember the linear term is the power one term. If I were going to write that with all of its terms, I would write 5x squared plus 0x minus 15 equals 0. When you have 0x, that is x to the 1, is missing in action, then this is what you do. You use the square root principle of solving quadratic equations, just like this. 5x squared minus 15 equals 0. Move the constant to the other side of the equal sign. Yes, that's right. But what about the zero principle? Well, we're using a different principle right now. Negative 15 plus 15 is zero. That will give us five X squared equals zero plus 15, which is 15. Now I need to get the x squared by itself. This is five times x squared. So let's divide by five. And divide by five. x squared equals 15 divided by five, which is three. I'm going to look and see why my cat is crying. Oh, OK, he's seen what he can get into in order to get attention from me. One day I'm going to start recording in my office where I don't have any kitties running around. Anyway, here's what I've got. X squared equals three. Now listen, we've talked about this. All positive real numbers, that is numbers in the real number system, have two square roots. A positive square root. Oh. Animals are attacking me. My life <clears throat> is so interesting. Had an invasion at four o'clock in the morning a possum and a possum was wandering around my kitchen. How did it get in? Through my cat door. Why do I leave the cat door open? So the cats can come in and go out. Well, today I had a an opossum who didn't seem to be that frightened of me. 
he didn't want me around, but he wasn't really that frightened. Yes, well, I just thought you'd care to know this has been an animal attack day. Not an attack, but an animal presence day. Although I do think that fly was trying to attack me. Now let's get back to business. X squared equals three. I take the square root of both sides of this equation. Oops, I forgot to put my negative. There you go. Square root of three, notice I moved it over. And here is where I acknowledge that all real numbers have two square roots, a positive and a negative square root. The square root of x squared is x. So x equals positive the square root of three and negative the square root of three. It's actually better to write the negative term first. Negative the square root of three, comma, positive the square root of three. And those are the solutions that you would write in your answer box. Yep. So let's go over this again. I have 5x squared minus 15 equals zero. So I add the 15 over to the other side. So I have 5x squared equals 15. Then I divide both sides by five. Five into 15 is three. So I have x squared equals three, but I don't care what x squared equals. I care what x equals. So to get x, I have to take the square root of x squared. So I can undo the squaring. And of course, I have to take the square root of the other side. And because all positive real numbers have two square roots, a positive square root and a negative square root, I have to acknowledge that fact right here. So x equals negative the square root of three comma positive the square root of three. There are two square roots and we're giving the exact answer. So let me write that also, exact answer. I'm not looking for a calculator approximation. When you take physics, or chemistry, you'll give calculator approximations. But in math, we try to give the exact answer so that you'll know there is one. Now we have 2x squared equals 22. We can go ahead and solve that divide by two, divide by two. X squared equals 22. The square root of X squared equals plus or minus the square root of 22. Now, is there a perfect square in 22? If this were 20, we would have a 4. But no, there isn't. So I don't have to simplify this. It's enough to say x equals negative the square root of 22, comma, positive the square root of 22. And that is what you would write in your answer box. piece of cake. Now finally, we're only going to do three of them. They're pretty easy. I've got four, whoop, four 
x squared plus 8 equals 0. Oh, uh, yeah, equals 0. I subtract 8 from both sides. Eight minus eight is zero. Zero minus eight is negative eight. I'm left with four X squared. I divide both sides by four. Which gives me X squared equals negative two. The square root of x squared equals plus and minus the square root, it's actually plus or minus, the square root of negative two. Uh-oh, we have just been drop kicked into the complex, <clears throat> the complex number system. Okay. X equals plus or minus the square root of negative one times two, which is plus or minus the square root of negative one times the square root of two, which is plus or minus i times the square root of two. And unless you're told otherwise, you can just say that x equals negative i times the square root of two, comma, i times the square root of two. Well, what if you're told to put this in a plus bi form. This is what you would do. X equals zero minus, aha, the square root of two i, comma, almost put the i out front, zero plus the square root of two i. Make sure your i is safely outside your root sign. Absolutely necessary, or it's wrong. This is the a plus bi form. If you're told to write the answer that way. Okay, enough of that. You've got the idea. Now let's talk about something that's very close to what we talked about before when we were <clears throat> solving quadratic equations the first time. Now there's a little bit of a difference. Use this graph to answer the questions. Okay, what are the x-intercepts? Let's see, a, that'll be negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, so negative six comma zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, zero. Now you're being asked, what are the zeros? Specifically, 
What are the zeros of f of x? Let's write that down. What are the zeros of f of x? I don't know what f of x is, but I do see the graph. The zeros are negative six and seven. The actual points on the x-axis where the graph crosses the x-axis. Notice the zeros are also the x coordinates of the x intercepts. We call them the zeros of the function. You'll learn more about those in college algebra. By the way, this is called a cupped up parabola. We'll talk more about that next class. Cupped up parabola. And this, this is a cupped down parabola. Cool. All right, again, we're being asked, what are the x-intercepts as ordered pairs? Well, the x-intercepts are negative 2, 0, and 5, 0. Negative 2, comma, 0, 5, 0. What are the zeros? negative two and five. It's a new concept you have to get used to, but it's not really that hard. Okay, Woo. now we're going to start solving quadratic trinomial equations with the um, um, quadratic formula. But I think it would be good to make a separate video for that so that you don't have to sit forever watching this video. So in this video, we solved quadratic equations by the square root formula of uh, the square root method, the square root principle. And then we introduced you to the concepts of um, the zeros of functions. Now, next, we're going to use the quadratic formula. See you then. Bye bye.